he's an armed uh, killer out there, so certainly uh, he is a danger to anyone he encounters. So we should be aware, and there's, he, he's mobile. From News Channel 8, this is a breaking news alert. And we begin with breaking news. A manhunt is underway tonight as police try to track down a mass shooter responsible for killing three people at an Edgewood, Maryland business and for another shooting a short time later in Delaware. So take a good look at your screen right now. This is the man the police are searching for. His name is Radi Prince. We're going to have live team coverage tonight and we're going to get to that in a moment. But first, we're going to begin with your first forecast. Meteorologist Josh Knight is joining us now with more. Josh. Hey, Lindsay and force as we go across the area. We do have a lot of sunshine for you. Just a few clouds starting to sneak into the picture. Uh, these are really the first clouds we've seen in a couple days. So 71 degrees for you right now in Bethesda. You can see beautiful evening out there for us. Sunset right at 625 tonight. So of course, once that happens, those temperatures will fall, but not as quickly as they have the last few nights. So that is going to make for it to stay just a bit more comfortable. 69 in DC, Quantico at 69, 72 in Leesburg, 70 for Fredericksburg. So in general, really feeling nice out there. So walking the dog later this evening. Just keep in mind as we get closer to 8 and 10 o'clock, temperatures do drop down into the 50s, so going to be really nice, comfortably cool, but you will want the jacket once we work our way closer to sunset. Overnight, temperatures are still going to be dropping. We're going to look for numbers that are down into the 30s and 40s again, just a few degrees warmer for basically everybody than it was this morning. Tomorrow, we're back up to 73, looking for 74 on Friday and even warmer for the week weekend. So how do those numbers compare to what's normal for this time of year and your next chance for rain? We'll answer both those questions coming up for you in just about 10 minutes. Josh, thank you. Back now to our top story. Police say that this is the man that is armed and dangerous. A manhunt is underway for Redi Prince. Investigators say that he opened fire on five people at a granite and tile company in Hartford County, as well as a sixth person in Delaware. At least three of those victims are dead. Maryland Bureau Chief Brad Bell has been on top of this developing story all day. He is alive just outside Advanced Granite Solutions. That's where all this violence began this morning. Brad. Yeah, it began just as the day was beginning. Now, right now, some of the employees that literally ran for their lives this morning are being allowed to return, go collect some of their belongings and, and get their cars out of the parking lots here. None of them yet willing to talk to us on camera, but we are hearing terrible stories. People hearing the shooting, realizing that colleagues had been shot, running for their lives, screaming, crying, hoping that someone could help them. The shooting happened just before 9 a.m. in a business park just beginning the work day. I was listening to it all happening from the front of my office. It was right out in front of my office. I heard all the screaming, all the running, all the jumping. Inside Advanced Granite Solutions, a kitchen countertop company, five people were hit, three dead, two critically injured. Neighbors see survivors running for safety. I think they're right there when it happened. I could tell the one guy was crying. Within four minutes, police are on scene. They put out a photo of the suspected gunman, a 37-year-old employee of the granite business named Radi Prince, a man with a long criminal history. They say he is driving a black GMC SUV with Delaware tags. At this point, we are looking for just this suspect, 100%. Uh, we do not believe there were other invo others involved. And then, at 11 a.m., 50 miles away, a shooting in Wilmington, Delaware. Prince believed to be the suspect there, too. Police say his victims were specific targets, but cannot be sure of his next moves. He's an armed uh, killer out there, so certainly uh, he is a danger to anyone he encounters. So we should be aware, and there's, he, he's mobile. So the last sighting of Prince was in Wilmington, Delaware this morning, just after that shooting. Police believe by now he has probably ditched the car that he was driving in. They are saying that those he shot today were people that he specifically targeted, people who he was, were in his life, but they cannot predict what he will do next. So the danger continues. In Edgewood, Brad Bell, News Channel 8. And about two hours after the shooting in Edgewood, police in Wilmington, Delaware, say that they were called to a shooting as well. Kevin Lewis is picking up our team coverage there where police just released details. Kevin. 
And Lindsay, authorities say this used car lot was Radie Prince's second target. Around 11 this morning, the secretary here called 911, reporting her boss had been shot twice, once in the head. Responding officers, they actually spotted Prince's black GMC SUV driving away. They chased him but couldn't keep up. Prince has not been seen since. The 37-year-old lived in Elkton, a small town in Cecil County, Maryland, close to the Delaware line. This afternoon, officers, many wearing bulletproof vests, surrounded his apartment there. One officer had a long gun aimed at the residence for hours. A red Dodge Charger connected to Prince was also parked out front. Neighbors evacuated from their homes stood in utter disbelief. This is a dangerous individual. This person shot six people in one day. Three are dead right now. Three are dead. This is a person with no conscience. This is not a person you should be protecting. And you can see two security cameras mounted on a utility pole beside of this used car lot. Unclear what those cameras might have captured. Clearly, police believe Radi Prince is targeting people that he has a grievance with. The main questions, what are his precise motives and where is he located this evening? We're live in Wilmington, Delaware. I'm Kevin Lewis, News Channel 8. And you can stick with News Channel 8 for breaking developments. For continuing coverage, you can download the ABC7 app. Just search for WJLA in the App Store or Google Play. And switching over now to traffic, we're going to see how the roads are faring in our area. Eric Smith is monitoring the backups in the region. Eric. Uh, hey there, Lindsay. It is going to be pretty heavy out there today for sure. Taking a look at 66 westbound past Route 28 in Centerville. That left shoulder is blocked for a crash. This was in your left lane, adding to a ton of volume out this way, basically from the Bellway area. So that's a big issue. Here's a look at 66 eastbound just before the Bellway. Holding traffic. This is a crash that started in the right lane, obviously. That's the lane that goes to the Beltway outer loop. They are trying to move it off to the left side where you actually have a shoulder. So that's what's happening right now. You see a Vita truck actually pushing the car. So this is going to be temporarily held. Just another issue for 66. Again, eastbound. Expect some heavy delays out of Vienna heading this way and into the Beltway. Hopefully, uh, they will get uh, that right side open up just momentarily and traffic will be moving again. Capitol Bellway top side near 355 in Bethesda, quite heavy as you try to head over to Silver Spring. Heavy delays at times past Connecticut Avenue. At this moment, it doesn't look too bad at this point. But do a chat at River Road. Both ways are still struggling quite a bit in the stretch below the 270 spur. Expect a solid jam to hold solid here. Up into Clarksburg, northbound 270 is still very slow. Delays have been solid here for most of the afternoon rush. This is where lanes narrow down and delays begin in Gaithersburg before Montgomery Village Avenue here for some solid backups. And finally, looking at 95 southbound into the Occoquan, quite slow as lanes narrow down. We do expect a lot of volume down this way as well. That's all from the Traffic Center. Lindsay, back to you. D.C. Police Chief Peter Newsham says that yesterday's scare on Howard University's campus was an actual threat. Although no gunman was found roaming campus, investigators are looking into who made the call for the shooter on school grounds. D.C. Bureau Chief Sam Ford has the story. A day after all the commotion at Howard University, it's true there was no active shooter, but police are not upset, believing callers were in real fear. It does not appear to be a hoax. It seems like the initial caller called because they received information from a third party, so they called in good faith. The events that played out at the medical school and other buildings were triggered, we're told, by a medical student who flunked out, whom police have yet to name, but is well known around Howard for making threats. Danny had come in weeks ago and created a disturbance here, and he was, the security uh, ushered him out. Stephen Whetstone, who works in the university's health sciences section, says many there were aware of the angry former student. He had made threats to come back and shoot up the testing center over at Stokes Library on the fourth floor. So he had made that kind of threat, and I think he was pretty much targeting his former classmates. Court papers show the same man subject of a stay away order from his former girlfriend, also a student, warning if petitioner alerts authorities that petitioner's sister and grandmother will be targeted. Petitioner fears for her safety. 
I think the person who called initially uh, believed that there could have been a problem at Howard, even though they were mistaken. This is homecoming week when many Howard alums will return to celebrate the university's 150 years. As for the former student, has he been arrested? Police spokesman told me today, no, not at this time. Reporting from Northwest Washington, I'm Sam Ford, News Channel 8. A retired Major General will face a court martial. He's accused of raping a child while on active duty in the 1980s. James Grazio Plain of Gainesville, uh, Gainesville, Virginia, is accused of committing rape over a six year period while stationed in the U.S. and Germany. He was scared. I mean, his eyes were like wide open and he kept looking back. We return to that breaking news in Maryland, how the Edgewood workplace shooting is rattling nerves in the neighborhood. And signs of this weekend's Mar Marine Corps Marathon, they're starting to spring up right outside our studios here in Arlington. We're going to take you inside the perimeter when we return.